Uh, does any, what do people think about this theory that if you are pro death penalty on some levels, that's a tacit endorsement into the idea that killing someone is the right thing to do. Cause that's what the tacit underlying message is. If you're pro death penalty, that there is a time and a place in which another human is justified to take another human's life. Okay, and see, once you pick, you you set up that construct mentally, well, then hell, it opens the door for killing somebody because they stepped on your lawn, or killing someone and then exonerating the officers because they thought a little boy's uh, BB gun was a real gun. Okay. Those officers who are exonerated, the overall, the underlying issue is that legally they're justified to have been able to kill human beings because we've set up and we believe in and put a lot of strength into the idea that there's a time and a place to kill another human being by the state. And don't you believe that that kind of mentality kind of trickles downhill into our culture, into who we are? Uh, you tell me. You tell me. That's how I see it. Seems pretty pr- cut and dry to me. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. It's real simple. If you want to have a society in which you're trying to tell these young fools, these young fiends, these young thirsty MFs running around here doing the dumbest life-altering things you could possibly do. You got to you gotta be that example. I'm, I'm calling out the culture. Calling out the culture. You want to tell them to put the guns down, but the United States doesn't put her guns down. You want to tell these young boys to talk it out peacefully, and then, you know, some of these parents will go to some of these these little league games, these kids, these games with their children and wild out over basketball games, over soccer games. I mean, completely just bug out. But then we want to tell the children that's looking at us that they shouldn't follow our example. I don't know, man. I'm just getting sick of time. Can we not? I know we're a long time away from it. So perhaps we can put together some petitions or maybe do an online poll. I mean, hell, they did an online poll and got together and put Sojourner Truth. I mean, oh my God, not such a truth, but to put uh, this woman on the, uh, on a $20 bill, I, I, just, I can't get over it. I can't get into it. Can't get over it and can't get into it. I never understand it. So if you can put together and do that for Harriet Tubman and through some online petitions, perhaps we can do some online petitions, uh, well, to do something that's a bit more positive than that. Can you tell I'm on, I'm not with the death penalty? I just I just don't think the state has the authority to, and it's it's not. And when I say this before, I've lost people when I say it, so I'm gonna say it again because I think that's more a manifestation of those individuals and not the flow itself. And it's pretty simple that we don't deserve the death penalty. It's not just that no one innocent deserves does not deserve to be put this to death by the state. We don't deserve for someone to be righteously. Because it's a human construction as to what what justice is and when somebody qualifies for the death penalty. I, I just think it's bad news for us. Uh, but what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Kima Silly he writes, are any successful women looking for men with real talent these days or is Apollo type dude still winning? <sighs> women want to be around interesting men, period. Make yourself more interesting. And all these men out here belly aching, you can't find a woman. Maybe you got some personality defects or something like that. Maybe you need to work on your game, you know, talking with people. And it's not even like trying to pick up people, but just talking with people. Maybe that's what it is. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm reading that the CIA and CIA agent is now admitting that the agency had a role in Nelson Mandela's jailing. And nobody's surprised about that. No one's surprised. That's been well documented. I'm also reading, here's some national news for you. I'm reading that Keisha Cole has located her biological father after 30 years. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> that explains it. 
She didn't she didn't know her daddy. Damn, that's key, isn't it? Ugh. That is such a key relationship. Daddy, daughter. Ugh. Not having a father in your life can mess a young girl completely up, especially if she doesn't have some positive male role models. Oh, my God. Mm-mm-mm. Mess her up. It's really sad. It really is. I don't mean to trivialize it. I mean, if you, you look at any adult who's got any personality issues or just some problems in general, emotional, not personality, but emotional issues, nine times out of 10, you can connect it back to the way they were treated by their parents. Nine times out of 10. Or family members. It's pretty sad. But Keisha Cole located her biological father after 30 years. And why? I mean, I guess I understand it. And that's deep. That's deep. And I don't know the circumstances between her biological father and her biological mother. I don't know it. But now after 30 years of searching, she's found him. That's that's a big deal right there. That is huge. I mean, on one hand, I'm happy. On the other hand, I'm like, well... Now what? He's grown, she's grown. I mean, does she want to like, you know, go do the whole little girl thing with them now? Or does she just want to talk with them? I guess knowing your roots, knowing where you're really from, we all feel that, right? I guess it. I get it. Does anybody have a similar story? I mean, were you reunited, reunited with a family mother, a father perhaps, a mother after many years? Were you adopted? And... You always had that burning desire. Can you explain what that is? Uh, share with us this morning. Currently 8.10 a.m. in the Queen City. Uh, Kenan writes, wow, related to Keisha Cole. But in her old show, this was a major issue. Her mother didn't know who her father was. Ah. Ooh, man, you're talking about three strikes. I mean, boom, you got a strike right there. Born into a world where your mama don't know who your daddy is. That's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair she does I mean it's one thing to say well you know he he ain't out here no more maybe you know he's got a new family or maybe he passed away but you don't know thanks mom <laughs> it's all uphill after that baby it's all uphill okay brighter days are before us you imagine I ain't trying to hate on her but I'm just saying come on ladies some things remain old school, like knowing who the father is of the child. I'm not here to judge you. I know these men are predators out here. I ain't here to judge you, but I'm just saying, can we, we get agree on just that one, please? <laughs> then we'll, we'll work on some others. I, I struggle sometimes to understand the way the way people get really, I won't say bent out of shape, but when I see grown, grown people, and I've watched these shows before on television, but I struggle to understand where they're coming from for some degree when it's like, you know, just because their father wasn't there, the whole life just went straight downhill. Now, like I told you, uh, my father uh, was, when I was younger, you know, picked me up on a regular basis. As I, be, as I became a little bit older, like teen, eh, he was on the other matters. But I guess I was lucky because I still had male role models, you know, uncle, grandfather, to try to, you know, fulfill that role. So, I, I don't know, maybe I don't want to come across as an elitist on any levels, not even emotionally, you know, because right? we all have our issues. But 30 years, I mean, part of me feels like just move on. Dale writes, this is just speculation. Wasn't Keisha Cole's mother a prostitute and her father may have been a John question mark? You just had to go there, huh, Daryl? Uh, many people may have been thinking it if they know anything about that story. You talking about Frankie? <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. If somebody can confirm it, let me know. Let me know. Listen, I want to talk about a new study. And... It concludes that young African Americans are the least likely to vote. Is that true? Does that ring true to you? Doesn't that seem to be backwards? 
it seems like they those individuals might be the very ones who might benefit from it. Did you see this? And it came out just a couple days ago, and it's been on my uh, on my to to talk about list for some time. Hold on, and uh, there we go. And um, I thought, wow, this is deep. So race matters when it comes to voting. And again, I know we've had our conversations over the years and we should continue to have these conversations about voting and how effective it really is. But if this is true, then we need to put more money into voter outreach, get out to vote efforts, okay? A new study says that young African-Americans are not finding their way to the ballot box. Now, I'll be honest with you, the story is coming from the Washington Post. So take it for what it is. Take it for what it is. But if if it's true, if it's true, that that would be amazing. It reads: African Americans account for a larger share of the Democratic primary votes this year than they did in two thousand eight. But that's because of older blacks, not higher participation by younger black people. Listen, your nieces, your nephews, your sons, your daughters. Are they motivated to vote? Isn't this like an age old issue? I mean, you know, young people are about that real, that trail. At least they think they're about that trail. A lot of them fall for the illusions of of trail, like 50 Cent. But I've always thought that the issue that we face with trying to connect young people with politics is that we don't really make any real connections with young people to politics. So for instance, we in debt them. You got to vote just because people died for you, son, daughter, all, all them people down in Mississippi got killed. You better get out there and vote. So they try to in debt you almost like voter shame you. And I don't know if voter shame is nece- necessarily the proper motivation for today's youth. Or for any youth. Well, what we rarely do is connect the dots, I've seen, to how particular policies, and I think you should start local, how particular policies make it every day or every month or a real impact in your life, right, in real time. I don't think we do enough of that. And I also don't think that we, 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 we promote the political successes enough, right, where, you know, issues where, and again, it's all about where your viewpoint comes from. Issues where, you know, either young people or the community that they live in has benefited from politics. We just can't keep saying, you got to do it. You got to do it. I do it. You got to do it. You do it. Why we vote? Because it's what we supposed to do. That's what most parents effectively say. But talking about how what role voting might actually play. That's just me. But if African-Americans aren't voting, these young folks aren't voting. Why is that? So a new study shows that African-Americans, the young African-Americans are the least likely to vote. Ah, boy. Uh, let me read just a little bit from you or for you from this uh, particular piece. African-Americans, I'm sorry, across two dozen states, where exit polls were conducted in 2008 and this year, black voters older than 45 grew from 12% of the electorate on average back in 2008 to 16% this particular year, this past year, uh, or this year. In those same states, black voters younger than 45 made up 11% of voters in 2008 versus 10% this year. That's not good. It's going down. Are are young blacks uh, or black people in general uh, suffering from uh, the Obama effect in the sense that that, you know, going into 2008, there was so much hope, change, change, change is going to happen overnight. He's going to do all these wonderful things that nobody else would do because he's different. And then things kind of progressed in a similar fashion, political gridlock. Um not the kind of changes that people may have been expecting. And so now they're like, well, listen, I came out for Obama and nothing changed, you know, like John from Princeton. 
and nothing changed. Is that what this is? 